Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Gas South Convention Center in Duluth, Georgia, it's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Gwinnett Business Radio is presented by Regions Bank, Brave the Beginning, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. And uh, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Gwinnett Business Radio. Mike Salmond with you. We've decided to let uh, Stephen, Julian, and Harper LaBelle have the day off, so you are stuck with me. But I've got a great guest with us. Robin Mock is joining us from Obria Medical Clinics. And uh, Robin, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Stephen's going to be very upset that he's not here because you brought gifts and you brought candy. Absolutely. And how did you know that I have a sweet tooth? (laughs) Who doesn't? Good point. Yeah. Very well said. <laughs> Before we get into uh, Robin's uh, profession with Obria Medical Clinics and the great work they do in the community, I want to tell you about one of our clients, and that, of course, is Regions Bank, one of our partners, actually. With the right support and strategic solutions, your financial planning can meet tomorrow's challenges today. Regions' local team of experienced private wealth advisors are right here in Gwinnett to serve you in all areas of growth. Make sure every step you can take can move you closer to your goals. Learn more at regions.com backslash wealth dash management regions bank member fdic thank you for that dan dan uh by the way braverman is our producer here uh robin mock obria medical clinics you are the executive director i'm going to ask you the the first question from ten thousand feet above and looking down what is obria medical clinics what do you do so Obria Medical Clinics is o- the only nonprofit women's health clinic serving Gwinnett and surrounding counties. We provide uh, pregnancy verification for Medicaid, full panel STD testing and treatment, well woman care, and full prenatal care. Most of all of our services are either free or low cost. So we are serving that underserved population. Okay. And how does having a clinic like Obria here in Gwinnett County, how is it helping the community? Well, what we did is look for the gaps in service uh, in our community and and the need. And and what we found in Georgia, 16.6% of women receive inadequate prenatal care. Uh, 19% of women of childbearing age are uninsured. And 46% of births are to single moms with little to no support. So that's the demographic that we're serving. We believe every woman deserves a healthy pregnancy and every baby a healthy start. So we want to break down any barrier a woman has as far as access to care. So a lot of the services are, are free or low cost. So as a, as a business type program, I have to ask, how are you able to fund these services to make it happen? Right. So we have some very generous donors. We also apply for numerous grants and foundations that support us. Okay. You're the executive director, eight years now. That's right. So I'm going to put you under the, the gun here and see if you can go back to when Obria began. How long has Obria been around? How did it get started? So Obria started in 1991 really as a resource for pregnant women. They provided uh, education, uh, material services such as diapers and wipes and clothing. Uh, they began expanding into the medical arena in 2006, offering pregnancy tests and limited um, STD testing. When I came on, we um, had the vision of doing more and providing more, and that's what has led us to where we are today in providing full prenatal care. All right. Um, as we talk about Obria Medical Clinic here on, and I say clinics with an S, more than one location. Well, actually, we have one location, but there are several locations across the nation in various states. Um, part of our strategic plan, though, is to start opening up some satellite clinics in Georgia. How many folks are coming through your doors each year? We serve about 1,600 unique uh, patients, but that translates into about 6,000 appointments. Okay. So, Robin, you're the executive director, which I've already mentioned like four times, <laughs> um, but that's obviously impressive. What, what, is, what is your vision moving forward? What, how would you like to see uh, growth within Obria? Oh, great question. So we are actually in the middle of a $4 million campaign. We are purchasing a new building next week. It's 12,560 square feet, and we will be expanding our current services and then um, offering new programs. 
Congratulations. Yes, we're very excited. Where are you located now? Where are you going to be? So we are on Old Norcross Road, just down from Gwinnett Medical or Northside Gwinnett Hospital. And we will be moving um, right off of Sugarloaf Parkway and Old Snellville Road. So we're very close to the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, right off the uh, bus line, right near all of the demographic that we serve. Okay. Well, that is Awesome news. Congratulations. Uh, we actually, I actually got to see you not too long ago when you guys won a, a, a Moxie Award, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I, I've asked you about you know, how you're funded and how you are able to raise funds and so forth. And you mentioned the grants and, and fundraising and, and people that are just very generous with their donations and so forth. Brand new building coming along, so everything is looking very positive. As far as the personnel, doctors specifically, talk about the staff you have in place and, and where they came from. So uh, we have an OBGYN on staff. He uh, relocated from New York City, supposed to have lo- relocated in 2020, and COVID changed all that. So yeah. he relocated in 2021. But he's actually the father of our medical director. And our medical director is who delivers all our babies, and then our OBGYN does the prenatal care. We also have a nurse practitioner slash midwife who also sees our patients. Um, We have on staff as well, we have another nurse practitioner, several RNs, several medical assistants, two registered sonographers, and then admin folks. So I think the total right now, we're about 21 on staff. Okay. And how do you invest in your people and and your staff? And, you know, how do you retain them? Well, we, you know, we're very close. I always say, you know, welcome to the Obria family because we really treat each other like family. We, um, our board voted to give us uh, unlimited PTO. And that really has been a catalyst for us being able to help each other in those times when people need to be off because of family crises that arise. And it takes away that stress of, oh, I've already used my PTO or I don't have enough. We, um, we also do a huddle each morning where we go around and state our goals for the day. And then we ask who needs help with what they're trying to accomplish. And so we're able to link arms and get jobs done. We also do staff development days every quarter where we close the clinic. We bring in speakers. We do team building exercises and things like that. Recently, you guys, as I mentioned earlier, won a Moxie Award. What was that award for? So that award was for um, enlightened employers. So a lot of the things we just talked about, you know, went with that award. We're mostly an all-female staff. We just ordered, uh, just we just hired a male who's part of our empowered program, which is our youth <laughs> development program. He's an educator, but we're mostly women, and we really empower women to you juggle all those hats that women have and and succeed in all areas of their life. On a personal note, you didn't know I was going to go here for this show. Uh, we'll save this for another time. But you're you're used to being around women. You have you told me before the show six daughters. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like um, God was planning on me, you know, leading a group of women when He gave me those six daughters. So it was very interesting. My husband and I, neither one have sisters. We both only have brothers, and so you know, we didn't tolerate a lot of drama in the house because we weren't used to it. And that has translated into the business world as well. So it worked out well. It was great training for working in a place right now where it's a lot of a lot of women. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. We're going to take a break. We've got some bills to pay, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about Obrea Medical Clinics uh, with the Executive Director, Robin Mock, and also learn a little bit about Robin as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Life is full of ifs. But if you want to cash flow like a pro and get paid up to two days early, safeguard against surprises and supercharge your savings, Regions Life Banking makes it possible. Regions Bank embrace the if in life. Regions Bank, member FDIC. For the first time ever, the Atlanta Gladiators podcast will now be on Business Radio X. Be on the lookout for new interviews each week as Director of Broadcasting and Communications Liam Gottimer chats with Gladiator players, coaches, and even representatives from corporate partners. For tickets, partnerships, and more, visit AtlantaGladiators.com or call our front office at 770-497-5100 to chat with a Gladiator representative today. Atlanta Gladiators Hockey, draw your sword. 
All right, welcome back again. We are on Gwinnett Business Radio talking with Robin Mock, the Executive Director with Obrea Medical Clinics, and we're broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Gas South Convention Center. And a reminder that love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Enjoy big savings and a hassle-free experience at Subaru of Gwinnett where people sell cars. Visit SubaruofGwinnett.com and join their family today or come on in and see the difference. If you're already a Subaruist, then check out their Facebook page, for the latest news, offers, and community events. So, Robin, we were talking at the beginning of the interview uh, about the, the how Obrea was formed and how it started several years ago, many years ago, actually, and the services you provide. People may say, is there really a need there? But you have some numbers that really back that there, there's a need for what this, for the services you provide. Right. One of the things that we are very focused on is infant and maternal mortality. And I actually serve on the infant and mortality action team for Gwinnett County with the Gwinnett Coalition. But some new numbers just came out um, showing some of the, the progress I feel like that we've actually made. And a couple of those areas is the infant mortality rate. In 2020 was 5.5, and in 2021 has gone down to 4.7. So we've made we've made some strides. Part of that is due to DPH's Safe Sleep Program, which we incorporate into our um, education program as well. Um, another thing that we uh, do is we partner with Mommy Me and Tobacco Free, helping our women who are smoking or vaping to cease during pregnancy and after. And um, we have held that. Uh, 0.5% um, goal for the last two years. So we've been successful in that area as well. Um, preterm births, how, however, are up um, from 9.8% last year to 105 And one of the things we're looking at to do and helping in this area is right now we are not able to uh, see high-risk patients in our um, facility. So we want to partner with um, women's telemed mm -hmm. and be able to bring in a high risk doctor via telemedicine into our clinic and our patient can see that doctor on site there rather than having to refer her out. Because what happens if a woman has to be referred out to maternal fetal and she doesn't qualify for Medicaid, she has to pay out of pocket and every visit is $1,500. So we don't believe a woman should be having to choose between the health of her and her baby and a roof over her head. So we want to be able to provide that service for her at a very minimal cost. You mentioned you're, you're serving an underserved part of the community and a very cultural, diverse community as well. How are you getting the word out? How are you reaching your patients? How are they finding out about you? So great question. Um, I know most of you out there, if you're going to go to a new restaurant, what do you do? You go on Google and you look at the rating, right, to see what their right. Google rate is. And, and that's what we do is we, we have a very high rating. We're 4.9% or 4.9 stars. And we, you know, we use a lot of CEO paid Google ads. And really, all of our marketing is on the, on the phone because that's where our patients are. Yeah. In your world, you, I'm assuming you don't have to deal with the insurance companies well, actually, we, we do accept Medicaid, and we do accept um, some traditional insurance, but the reason behind that is so that we can serve pregnant teens. A lot of times, they're under their parents' insurance, and we want to be able to serve them. We want them to come where there's a non-judgmental atmosphere. We can really provide them the resources they need. We have a very strong education program, and so our patients are put in um, with a facilitator in a group of women that are all going to deliver within the same trimester. And as they take classes online, they receive points, and then they bring those points into our clinic and shop in our baby store, which has all brand new baby items, baby clothes, baby equipment, everything they need. And they can actually, through our education program, come out of there without having to purchase a thing for their baby. So if a young woman walks through your doors, she's found out about you and she's coming on in, what are you requiring from her? Does she need to show proof of income or lack of income? What, what, what is she expected to have with her? Really, all she needs to have with her is a picture ID. And then we work with her on the financial piece. If she will help her fill out uh, the application for Medicaid, and if she qualifies, we're all good. If she doesn't, we have a low-cost option for her that she can pay over the duration of her pregnancy. Can you tick off again maybe all the services you provide for those people that might have missed it? Sure, absolutely. So we offer um, pregnancy tests and ultrasound for verification of pregnancy for Medicaid. We do full panel STD testing and treatment, and we offer all students uh, – Middle school, high school, college age, 10% off on STD testing. We do um, uh, well woman care. We believe that's so important. And then we also offer full prenatal care. So let's just say someone comes in our door that 
does not qualify for Medicaid, yet they have a job, but their employer doesn't provide any kind of medical benefits. There's a lot of women that fall into that right. gap. So she can a- a- obtain prenatal care for us for $1,300 for the entire nine months. Is there any counseling provided, or do you have a partner that might help with the counseling side of things if they feel like they need some of that as well? Great question. We actually have a licensed counselor on site two days a week. Part of our plan when we move into our new building is to expand that and have someone there all the time. Um, so, yes, we do. We believe that's so important. The, the mental health of pregnant women right. is, is very real. And actually, it's been proven that um, women of color have a five times higher chance of having postpartum depression. And that's a major demographic that we serve. And so we want to make sure that she's protected and, and understands those warning signs. Are there any services you're not providing now that you would like to see in the future? Yes. Yeah, so a- a- actually, when we move into our new building, we're going to be expanding. Two, two big areas we're going to expand into is when we're going to start a fatherhood program. We want that guy that's sitting in the waiting room to know that he's more than just the ride. So we will be hiring a full-time male to come in and really be a mentor to our guys and help them really see what it looks like to be a father. A lot of times they didn't have a father figure in their own life, so they don't know. And then the other area we'll be expanding into is pediatric care. We believe this is just a continuum of care for our current families, and then we also want to serve the foster care um, community as well. Okay, we're going to give it at the end of the uh, program as well as far as website and everything. But uh, let me go ahead and ask right now, the website, people want to read up more about it, learn more about it. Where can they find this information? It's very simple, obria.org. And obria is O-B-R-I-A. That's right. Dot org. Yep. That is very simple. All right, let me get a little personal now, Robin. Okay. Uh, I won't ask you about your six daughters anymore. Okay. Um, but but um, you've been the executive director for eight years, but Obria's been around since 1991. Did you find Obria? Did Obria find you? How did that connection happen? So, very interesting story. I was looking for a place to volunteer in the community, and I received an email, and I didn't know who they were. I still, to this day, do do not know how I got on that list. (laughs) And um, I read it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I got a flyer in the mail, and they were looking for volunteers. And I was like, oh, maybe this is it. Because I wanted my girls to see me more than just a mom, but actually helping other people. And, and I'm thinking, though, if you had six sons, it might not have hit ho- as home for you. Obria obviously serving mo- mostly women, of course. Right, yeah. And, I mean, I love babies. That's why we have six. The minute they started to walk, I was ready for another one. So, um, yeah, it just it was a perfect fit. Which is amazing since you're 35 years old. Yes, I started kids. really young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so so what were you doing back then, and, and uh, what was the transition like? So um, I was working at Chick-fil-A Scenic Highway as a marketing director, and I believe that that, insur- that experience there was really just to educate me on partnering with nonprofits in the community. The, uh, off the um, Tom Balsamides, the operator at Chick-fil-A, that was very important to him, and he was very intentional on who he partnered with, and so I learned a lot from that, and then when I came into Obrey, I brought that with me because we're very intentional on partnering with other nonprofits and other um, agencies because we can't do it all. And so we have to have, you know, places we can refer our patients out to. Some people might assume, well, to be an executive director where you're at, you must have this whole healthcare background, been in the healthcare industry your whole life. You come in with a fresh set of eyes. You're looking at it from a different point of view. How has it helped you maybe that uh, you obviously have experts there that have that background, but it's a little different from yours? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I I thought growing up I was going to be a nurse, and, and I for some reason I derailed on that and went into education. And, and we did a, a, a employee devel- development day where we had a consultant come in and do the disc for us. And we all scored, and he had us go stand on our letters. And all my medical team were S's, and I was a D. And I never would have made it as a nurse. I don't have that empathy and that compassion, you know, that nurses have. So it really is great that I ended up where I was. But I I do have a bachelor's in education, a master's in education. And right before COVID, I decided to go back into school and get my MBA in healthcare administration because I wanted it to at least look like I knew what I was doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I do have that background now. Okay, so you got the cred all of a sudden. I got the cred. Um, when you took the job, you probably had ideas of what it would entail and what it would look like. 
What have you learned? What did you not expect? Like, oh, I did not know this. What has surprised you the most since becoming the executive director? I learned a lot about myself. Um, you know, I was, I'm a very driven, probably a type A personality, and learning to really accept others the way they are and, and helping our team work together, even though everyone is so different. Um, I would say that was probably the hardest thing for me. It's something I have to intentionally work at all the time, but I love it, and, and we have such a great team. I'm going to guess that you're inspired almost every day with the folks that come through your doors and you see what's going on and you see how you're helping. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, so many of our patients have so many layers of things that, you know, I've never had to deal with personally. I would say probably once every two to three weeks, we have a, one, a pregnant mom who's living in her car and we have to find housing for her. And actually our... That wasn't um, in the job description, was it? No, it wasn't. And, you know, it's just, it breaks your heart when you see, you know, all the things that have led up to that. And so one of the things that we are looking at to do once we finish our capital campaign and we've started all the programs we plan on starting is to open up a women's shelter for our women because it's so difficult to find placement for them because everybody's full, everybody's trying to meet that need, but it's overwhelming. I would think a lot of times when you see folks coming through your doors, you're seeing young ladies or older ladies, you may be going, reminding you of one of your daughters. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you I'm know, thinking your jobs, it can be very emotional. Absolutely. We, we actually have, um, I just thought of this one patient who, um, we were her provider for her first pregnancy. They, um, she got married and moved away about an hour and a half away. Her husband's insurance, we, we don't accept yet she's still driving an hour and a half for her second pregnancy because she loved the care that she got at Obria. Yeah, the relationships, of course. Yes. Speaking of relationships, I know a big part of your job, I'm assuming, is building business relationships because you've got to have those to keep your doors open, to get those people to support you financially and any otherwise. Um, talk about the networking that you have to do and what you try to do to keep the, 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 those donations and, and that support coming in. Yeah, I mean, it's just so multifaceted on so many levels of, of building those relationships. Um, we're a member of the chamber, so I try to go to those kind of events. I try to go, we're, um, we are a fund holder at the Community Foundation of Northeast Georgia, so we're connected there. Um, we, when we find another nonprofit that's doing something we don't do, we go visit because we want to make sure it's a great place to refer our patients. Um, donor development, donor relationship is very important. We've um, really changed our whole fundraising method so that we're doing smaller, more intimate events where we can build those relationships, taking donors to dinner, to coffee, that kind of thing. So really, it's, it's about patient relationship. It's about donor relationships. Right. It's business. You know, it's all about relationships. Obviously, an audience for Business Radio X, our audience are executives, business leaders, decision makers, things like that. That business owner or entrepreneur or solopreneur who's listening right now, how can they help? How can they be involved? Well, we do have a lot of volunteer opportunities. We'll have even more when we move in. Um, always, you can be involved with your monetary giving. Right. You can um, always strike yes, a check. Always strike a check. We're a 501c3, so you get that tax write-off. Um, yeah, and just, we, you know, we'll be happy to put you on our newsletter if you want to sign up for that. So you can get, you know, uh, monthly newsletters, updates on our patients, patient stories, things like that. Great. Well, Robin, I got to see you a few months ago when you won the Moxie Award. I was able to do a quick interview with you right after you had won. And we said, we've got to get you in the studio. So it took a few months, but I'm glad we were able to get you scheduled. Is there anything that you want to talk about or any part of any message that we're not getting out there that you want to talk about regarding Obria Medical Clinics? Uh, one of the things I think, you know, coming in um, when I did, there was a lot of vision casting. And I think that's so important for organization for businesses for everyone to have a vision of where they want to go and where they want to be and it's important I believe to identify those gaps within your community whether you're a nonprofit looking at gaps in services you're a business owner look, looking at gaps in client product or market share and getting your team on board with the change that's going to have to take place to meet that vision and that's probably been my journey from when I first came on till now. And now we're creating new vision because we're moving. And really, it's almost kind of like a change management process and showing the need and figuring out how we're going to meet that need and then actually 
figuring out what to do. And so we, you know, we have a strategic plan like everybody else does, but part of that strategic plan that's so important is the operation plan where we really sit down and look at our goals and divide them up to who's going to do what and when are we going to meet it. So it's not just a strategic plan out there that, oh, yeah, we might do that. We are going to do it, and a lot of times we're doing it less time than we planned. Yeah. I love the passion that I've seen from you today. I am assuming it's not that hard to get up in the morning to, to head on to work to do the good work you're doing. No, I was up at four this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we joked before the show, probably a little bit more fulfilling than marketing chicken sandwiches. Yes, but don't tell Tom that, but it is. We all love the Chick-fil-A. Yes, absolutely. And if you want to bring Chick-fil-A next time, that's fine. We'll make sure Steven's here. We will enjoy the candy uh, after the show for sure, though. Uh, Robin, again, the website for those that would like to volunteer, help make a monetary donation, need your services, just want to find out more is? Obria.org. And spell Obria one last time. O-B-R-I-A. I'm spelling challenge is why I asked. <laughs> Thank you so much for ask, uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Robin Mock with uh, Obria Medical Clinic. She is the executive director. My thanks to Dan Braverman as well, our producer for today's show. Uh, Stephen and Harper, we'll see them, I guess, next time for the show. Until then, I'm Mike Salmon. Thank you for joining us here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Mm-hmm.